Hi everybody, today I wanted to talk about Hobonichis, which you guys know that I love and adore. And in case you haven't seen any of my other videos, I've had Hobonichi accessories for several years, but last year, meaning September 1st, 2015, when they come out with their new line for the next year, that's the first time I actually bought the Hobonichi planners. And I went a little crazy because I had never used one of their planners. I didn't know what would work for me or what I would like. And so I wanted to try all of them because I at least for sure don't know what I like. I kind of, I try and make the best decisions, but I don't really know what I like until I'm actually starting to use something and holding it in my hands. So if you saw my unboxing and I've done videos on how I've used all of them, this is kind of a wrap up to all of that, how I actually use them, if they worked for me, if they didn't work, and kind of just my overall opinion now that we're towards the end of the year. I did try and use all of these and I'll show you that some worked better than others. And then moving forward, taking that information for 2017 on what I am going to be using for the next year. So let's go ahead and start with the A6, this, this pile, which is quite large. And then this is the weekly booklet. I do have a video on at least one on how I use this. So this is the A6 booklet and this is, as you can see, it's marked weekly, which is their answer to the A6 because as you know, it just has the months and the days in there. So in case you're looking for a weekly spread, as you can see, and you probably know that it's a little bit smaller, so it will fit into your cover in the back, front, wherever you want it. And so I use this initially as a food tracker and kind of, you know, my water tracker. So that's what kind of what that looked like in there. I gave myself a sticker for if I did a good job for the day. And then I switched and I started using it as kind of a budget and my money tracker as well, where I would just write down what I spent for the day and just things like that. I kept this in my wallet. So it was just in a pocket with my on the go planner. And it's, as you can see, it's very, very thin. It's a nice little booklet, but I would say I probably only use this as you can see, probably for only about six or so months out of the year. So a little bit more than half. And I think ultimately it's a great idea. And a lot of us were really excited about this because we like the A6 size, but we want a weak spread. And I think the Mambi Happy Planner kind of said it the best. So whenever you have a smaller size like this with their mini Happy Planner, they mentioned this. They tried really, really hard to make it work with a vertical layout, but in a size this small, the vertical, as you can see, the, the columns just get so tiny. I would say this is a little bit over an inch wide and I have very small handwriting. I like to write with very small pens, meaning like a 0.3 Japanese pen. And even I was finding that this was really, really tiny space to write in. And I think I'm not alone in that where we all really wanted it to work, but I think most of us are found that it was just way too small for that. So I kind of got frustrated with it. And I think that's ultimately why I stopped is it just, it's just too small for this kind of spread. I think like the happy mini happy planner, if they had a horizontal, even though the, the footprint doesn't change, just that horizontal layout is just a much better footprint in this kind of a size. So there's the weekly booklet. And then this is my A6 English. And I will show you, I took it out of the front cover. What I really, really love about the English is that it is marked with the year. So this is great for archiving. I don't really archive the majority of my planners because they're kind of just like, you know, nitty gritty down and dirty type of planning, which I don't really care about. But I really had high hopes of archiving this because this was my gratitude journal. So I'm not going to be able to show you what I wrote because it's extremely personal. But this is just a perfect size for it. And I would write on average about five things that I was grateful for for the day. So obviously I wasn't writing like I'm glad I have two eyes that I can see. I was writing a lot more detail than that. So I was writing about situations and what I was grateful for about certain situations or somebody, something that somebody said to me or about a specific person, something like that. So a lot more detailed than just a one kind of word thing that you're grateful for. And I really, really liked it. It was so effective and I love going back and reading what I wrote, but Life kind of happened about the middle of the year. I kind of hit the wall and I talked about this in, in at least one of my other videos, but 
That's really why I stopped using this is because I got really overwhelmed and I had to go down to basics. And this was one of the casualties among, I would say the majority of my planners. I think July is really when it kind of hit the wall. And I think I was only using maybe one planner at that time. So it does make me sad. I wish that I had had the full year. As you can see, I used this for about half the year up until the end of June. And I do wish that I had it because I just love that idea of having just a completed book and having just an entire year here and something that I would archive. But I am grateful, since this is my gratitude journal, I am grateful that I do have the six months that I have in here. And I, I can still write for the rest of the year what I have left if I want to. But I guess it's my perfectionistic tendencies. I just wish that everything I'd written like every single day. I really, really love this sack cover, which is S-S-A-C-K if you're not familiar with that. I also have talked about this in some of my other videos. It's a silicone cover. I love the A6 colors. So I, especially one of my favorite colors is this lighter blue. I wanted to buy an A5 cover, but I didn't like the colors. And so I was hoping that this next year they would have better colors, but unfortunately they have discontinued this, these silicone sack covers altogether. So that's really unfortunate. I was disappointed about that, but I really do like this cover. It just fits like a glove. And with the pen clip right here, I would just clip my, use the pen clip and clip it. Cause obviously you're not gonna be able to fit a pen in there, but I just really liked the way that this felt. And I really like the size of this. Then I ended up buying the A6 Avec and I think since I did this, a lot of people have put their Avex in a traveler's notebook, but I did this at the first of the year. So I've got four strings in here and I set this up as a home management planner. And it's really for those things like the, the things that only need to be done like every a few times a week or those seasonal things. So obviously this is like not do the dishes every day because we all have to do those every day, whether we want to, those, want to do that or not. But I needed something like this to keep track of all the things because I just forget if that's not organized and written down somewhere. So you can see it's, it fits really nicely into my hand. It's a really nice size, but the stickers take up so much room and I did make a folder back here. I don't think I ever did a flip through or a video on this. So I'll do this really quickly. This is the Hobonichi photo insert. So it's just the big plastic pockets, the full size pockets. And as you can see, I just have a whole bunch of stickers relating to home in here. And so that was a really nice idea. I did use quite a bit. And then this is the card insert that they have with Hobonichi. So with the card, they have two full size pockets in the front and the back, and then otherwise it's split in half. So again, more little stickers there relating to my home. And then here, as you can see my word of the year, and then obviously home management. I've got these stickers right here. So let me see if I can show you some pages that are good. Like right here, I would just slap down some stickers. This is, I think this is a Saturday, which I do a lot of things on Saturdays. And so this is what I needed to get done for that particular day. Some days I have a lot of writing in here. Other days, as you can see on this particular day, I didn't need to do anything, but we did get paid. So just that kind of an idea. I did use this for the majority of the, that six months. This is some stickers that didn't fit in anywhere. And then I did make a pocket folder that goes on the last one. So I've got some Midori passport size. And these are cool because they have, they, they would fit in here, but I didn't have a string available. So I just put those in there and then some more just kind of random quotes and some stickers back there as well. And so that's what that looked like. Unfortunately, this ended up not working out really great. And I think it's because it's just so bulky. I wanted this to be able to just kind of like lay open on my kitchen counter at all times. And sometimes with traveler's notebooks, depending on what you have in there, it didn't do that. And so that just kind of bothered me. And so the next six months of the Avec is just, I didn't even touch it. It's completely untouched. So I will probably try and find a separate purpose for this. I think another reason this failed is a lot of people love the Avec, having the, you know, the, the entire year split up, but I've realized that I don't. I really, really like all of one year in the same book, and I understand why people love it. You know, it's a lot more portable, it's a lot thinner, that kind of a thing, but I don't like the Avec. 
before, like I said, because I like my years all together. It's a great, great idea, but this is much more appealing to me, having it all in one book than dividing that up. And it just kind of goes back to storage and keeping track of things, that kind of a thing. But anyway, it was a good solid try. Here is my A6 cover that I had. And then the last two planners are obviously the weeks, which you guys know I completely love this. I did use this for the entire year and I will continue to use it to the very last day of December. And this is my on the go planner. I have several videos on this as well. I have used the majority of the note pages back here and then the layout in case you haven't seen that is just my appointments. And then I would use this for any kind of notes. As you can see some weeks I didn't have any others. It was completely filled up. Worked out really, really great. So this is for basically sermon notes and just my schedule on the go if I'm available, if somebody asks me or if I need, I'm trying to schedule something. So this is a perfect, I think the weeks is just a genius little planner. And then last but not least, the biggest one is the A5 Cousin. And again, I knew I was not going to want the Avec, so I went ahead and got the full version. Of course, we all know that the Avec now has the weeks in there with the Avex, so everyone just loves that. But I still love the just the full size book. As you can see, I've added some Girl of All Work tabs. So the upcoming is Marks My Month, the notes is for the weeks, and then the schedule is for the day. And I probably, unfortunately, only use this for about four out of the 12 months. There are a lot of reasons for that, and I think that this is gonna warrant a completely separate video, but I really do love the A5 Cousin. This is probably, if I have to choose all of these, even, I mean, I love them all, so it's very difficult, but even between these two, which are probably the, my most used and my most favorite, I'm gonna have to choose the Cousin just because that's kind of my go-to size, the one that I'm most comfortable with, as well as the Cousin has the month, the week, and the days in it, which is really what I'm all about. I'm all about the big picture as well as the details, so I just love that. I think this is probably the most versatile out of all of them. So really, really love the Cousin. And then I also wanted to show you these. I did order the notebooks, the A6 ones. Honestly, did not even open these. So that was kind of sad about that. The, the Weeks booklets, I think I ended up ordering three packs of these. So nine total with the different colors, the dark green, orange, and the turquoise. And as you can see, there are five left. So almost half that I used. This is a really great size because it fits into most women's, at least, wallets. It's just a great wallet size. And some of the pages, I think, if I can't, I think they can, um, I think you can tear these out. Yep, I can tear those one out. So that's another great versatility with these books. So I really like these. I use some of the dark greens for some financial stuff and an orange and the blue I used for my ink samples, which I showed you, I've done a video on that. And then for the A5 ones, same thing as the A6, I did not even touch these. So with all of this information, you kind of just have to have to evaluate some things. And so honestly, I was trying to be super frugal for 2017 and you guys know how many planners I have. So I'm like, okay, girl, like just stop with the buying and just use what you have and just suck it up. But, so, and I'm like most of you on September 1st, I had marked by Hobonichi's because that's when they're launched and September 1st came and went and I didn't order them because I was trying to like I said trying to be use what I have and be really frugal and then another week came and went and I didn't buy it again but as the weeks progressed I found myself just getting I don't want to say depressed but I guess kind of a planner depression where I just got really sad thinking about 2017 and not having a single Hobonichi in my lineup so I finally decided, okay, I, I'm going to give myself permission to buy one Hobonichi. So which is it going to be? It was going to be the cousin. And so I, like I normally do, went and did some shopping and was just looking at different prices. And so I went to my main sources, so JetPens, Amazon, and eBay. And JetPens and Amazon were about the same price. I think it was like $59 for the cousin, which is expensive, but you know, I wouldn't have to pay the exorbitant shipping cost coming from Japan, from Hobonichi. But then I found a cousin from eBay and it was only $42. So I thought I'd hit the jackpot. And unfortunately there was a 
there was a series of unfortunate events, let's just say that, and this is probably my one and only really negative experience with eBay, and I'm not gonna say the seller or you know make general statements or anything. I think it was just, they were ignorant, I think, about Hobonichi as well as, I don't think it was a language barrier at all, even though they didn't speak English very well. I don't think that was it. I had to explain to them the difference between the English and the Techo, and I also had to explain to them the difference between an A6 and an A5, and I think that that was probably the, the really the only unacceptable experience that I had with this particular seller. So that was, and that was shocking because they were, you know, authentic Japanese. Anyway, what happened was their description was completely false and the title was also completely misleading. They, they touted it as an A5 cousin, the description, all of the the um, dimensions and everything was for an A5 cousin, but as you can see, I didn't even open this because I was so disgruntled about it. This is not an A5, this is an A6. So they sent me an A6 and hopefully, again, I've had just a you know, terrible time just trying to communicate with them and I don't know when I send this back if I'll even get my money back. I'm hopeful, I'm going to try and remain optimistic and positive about it, but I am gonna send this back then I was back to square one and I thought, okay, well, if I'm going to order from the Hobonichi website, obviously I need to make it worth my while because I didn't want an A6. <laughs> so that was the problem with the eBay seller. I didn't want an A6. I, if I had to choose, I was going to choose a cousin, which I had here and then also a weeks. So I could have ordered these from Amazon and jet pens. And with the prices, I, I had a hundred dollar budget. I had set that pretty much at the beginning of this year for Hobonichi. And so if I had ordered these two from those two sources, this is all I would have gotten. And I know we talk a lot about Hobonichi and how expensive, especially the shipping is, but this is all I would have gotten with my money with those two. However, ordering from the Hobonichi website, I was able to get not only the Cousin and the Weeks, but I was able to get the, the new Weeks bookmark as well as the weekly booklets that I adore. I was able to get four of those. All of this was my $100 budget. So I really do feel happy about that. I, I feel like I made the best financial decision I could after I, you know, made that mistake with eBay. So anyway, here is my cousin for 2017 and comparing this to 2016, my number one concern was if it was gonna be damaged like my 2016 one. As you can see, the 2017 is completely perfect. So I am super happy about that. I will do a complete setup video on how I'm gonna be using this for 2017 later. But I was wondering if they would keep the numbers and or the colors for the months the same and they did. So that was cool. And then another, well, let me talk about the weeks first. So. If you guys know me, these are my two favorite colors. Last year for 2016, I don't think they had the red because I think I probably would have chosen that. But for 2016, I chose this gorgeous blue. And so for 2017, I got the red because this is just my two favorite colors. I mean, I could just probably stop the video here and just admire these. But anyway, so kind of some interesting differences. Mainly, I think the insides are all the same, but as you can see, 2016 is a lot more noticeable than the 2017. I do like this better. And then also with the cover, completely different feel. I, these are both the basic ones. So these are not, you know, the obviously the decorative ones or special fabric covers or anything like that. So this one for 2016 is very much a kind of a rougher feel, the, the fabric kind of linen type of feel. And then for 2017, it's just interesting that it's more just the plastic of feel. It's a completely different feel. So anyway, that's just something I've noticed off the bat. You can see with my 2016, it's so beat up. I mean, I probably made this stain in the first week or two that I started using it. So here's what those look like with my 2016. I didn't, I did put a few stickers in there at the beginning, but after that, it was just pure writing. I just kind of think it's interesting to look at brand new planners versus, you know, the ones that are well loved and well used. So that's what those look like there. So I'm really, really excited to use my one for 2017. I 
If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I'm not using this for my on-the-go planner. So again, this is going to be a separate video on how I'm going to be using that one. And then with my notebooks, I took these out. So like I said, they changed up the colors and I'm assuming that they do that every single year. So these were last year's, which are fine. But look at this. 2017, if you want to describe my planning and my planners and my supplies in a nutshell, it's these three colors. The nice dark true red, this beautiful kind of like turquoise robin egg blue, and then this chocolate brown. So because I knew that I was going to be using, or I love to use the Weeks notebook so much, as well as because they were my three all-time favorite colors, I went ahead and ordered four packs. Of those so I'm really really excited about that and then last but not least the new week's bookmark this is super super flimsy I'm not sure how much it's going to stand up to wear and tear I don't think it's going to be very durable with the weeks as you know you only get two bookmarks and I usually keep one in my current week and then I keep one with my the current next note page so I think I'm going to end up keeping this one the stencil to mark my month. And I am not going to, we all know that the week starts in December, but I am not going to be starting mine. I am going to go ahead and use my 2017 all the way to the end. So I'm just going to keep it, I think, in January. We'll see how that works out. Otherwise, I'll keep it in the back with the pocket that they send. So anyway, those are my decisions and how 26 worked out for me. I hope this has been a helpful kind of thought process video for you. I know I like to watch these kinds of things on how people make their decisions. But anyway, thanks for watching and I will talk to you guys again soon.